Tush push. The brotherly shove is not going anywhere. And either is Jalen Hurts' fantasy football production. There, there's even a lot of thinking that he'll have less of that kind of production anyway because of Saquon Barkley, no Kelsey to lead the way. But bottom line is there is no ban of the brotherly shove. And that's great news for Jalen Hurts. He's going to have a remarkable year under Kellen Moore repairing this offense. But this is not going to be a proposal to take this away, nor should it be. I'd be ashamed of the NFL if they said, well, this team figured out how to do something no one else can do properly, so let's take it away from them. That would be, a, in, in my opinion, a corrupt move by the NFL anyway. Brandon Ayuk rumors. Brandon Ayuk uh, potentially available according to some reports. Again, Niner fans are going to say that's not true. And there really is no concrete evidence that any of it's true anyway. We're in smoke season. And we discuss all that. The, the Cardinals coming from Arizona are open-minded about trading the 1.4. That's not smoke. Whether they trade it, what they trade it for, how they get out of it, if they get out of it, that is all going to be speculation and smoke we're breaking it all down right now the fantasy football show begins right now live from the fantasyfootballshow.com studios it's the fantasy football show live monday through friday 8 p.m eastern smitty is also live whenever news breaks from the fantasyfootballshow.com news desk here is your breaking news We've got a lot of things to cover on today's show. We'll open the phone lines a, a wee bit early. But we're going to kick it off real quickly and say that the Tush Push, the Brotherly Shove, I don't even like to call it this thing, to be honest with you. Uh, the Brotherly Shove, not going to be banned, and uh, nor should it be. Again, be completely ashamed of the NFL if they did to try and take away an advantage that this team has figured out how to exploit. And I think they still do it. Like, Barkley will definitely lessen the, the the need to do it when you need three yards, two yards, whatever. But when there's a first and one yard, they're going to do it. And the, the main reason why it's successful, obviously, Kelsey had something to do with it. But this man can out-squat anybody. This guy can out-squat almost every single lineman, offensive lineman, defensive lineman in the National Football League. He can squat over 600 pounds. And that's the reason it's very successful. But they do have Barkley. They don't have Kelsey. There's a lot of thought that maybe it'll be dialed back. Halfway? No, probably not. But they're not going to need to do it as much. Plus, you'll keep them healthier the more you don't shove them into a pile of 300-pound men. So, I, I very much love Jalen Hurts in 2024. His ADP is dropping into round number three on Underdog Fantasy. Promo code Smitty ADP. If you guys want to draft with me during the evenings, Hit this link now so you're not scrambling to try and get in later. Uh, you'll be ready to jump in. All you got to do is click this link, download the app, and you can even do the deposit later. Just click the link, download the app, make sure uh, it enters code SMITTY for you, and you'll be all ready to go for when we draft. I mean, it takes like one minute, two minutes to do a $10 minimum, and they double your first deposit all the way up to 100 But Underdog Fantasy, this guy's going to the third round. Mahomes is the biggest steal in fantasy right now in round four on Underdog. Uh, I've seen Mahomes go at 5.1. He's been going, actually his ADP is around 4.10 to 5.1. <laughs> Mahomes, it's crazy. But even if you just say round four, Mahomes is your fourth drafted players win a league material. Getting Hollywood Brown, it's going to be a, a much better year. He's going for a three-peat. I think, I, I think there's a really good chance he could get it. I think this team, though, from the NFC side of the fence will be the team that faces off against whether it be the KC Chiefs or whoever the hell, Buffalo, whoever ends up getting uh, Lamar and, and Henry finally taking you know, the next step together. Whatever the case may be, I believe that this team, the Philadelphia Eagles led by this man, that will continue to, to flourish and, and, and be groomed into an elite quarterback, not just fantasy, but NFL. Top five NFL quarterback, top five fantasy quarterback. I love people hate him. I love that people think he's not a good NFL quarterback. I love that people think he's figured out. He had a bad coordinator type situation in 2023 as they tried to fill the void and did it very badly when, when Steichen went to Indianapolis. An amazing, amazing part of why Hurts has become the player he's become. And now Kellen Moore, you could say he failed in, 
in LAC, whatever, I don't care. Kellen Moore, who did wonders in, in, in Dallas, is coming over to fix this this uh, this offense. And, and Kellen Moore, with all these weapons, he's going to absolutely explode. Uh, so very excited about that. We got a $50 hauler right out of the gate by Decker. Decker to Smitty. I want to put my bold prediction up. Been a Chiefs fan from uh, from the, the oh, man, Okoye days, Christian Okoye. We're dropping, uh, we're doing it again this year. So 3P, Deckard wants his $50 hauler up, Deckard to the moon. Deckard gets his $50 hauler. Alert, super chat alert. Alert. Super chat alert. Okay, Deckard, Deckard, $50 hauler, Deckard. Uh, Deckard on the $50 hauler board. So if, if those that don't know, when you drop a $50 hauler, you get a, a prediction to go on the board, and then you're entered the you're entered in the contest. Motion detected at the front door. Ziggy, show me the front door. Who's there? When you okay. when you win this contest and we, we find the winner by combing through them as a group. Um, later on, is that, who is that? Ziggy, off. We'll comb through all these at the end of the year and you guys decide who the winner is. And you might, you might have somebody make a, a really good prediction that has two parts to it and the second part doesn't land. You can still win. It's all up to you guys if you say that's still the best prediction. The one that won last year was that Bijan Robinson would be a backup running back. A troll dropped. And he's not a troll. He's not a troll. Ziggy, off. Off. He's not a troll, the, the the follower. He just likes to throw troll comments out, and he won. He tried to troll Bijan because we're all so high on him, and he goes, Bijan will be a backup. And and while Bijan wasn't a backup, the impact of what Arthur Smith did to him ended up having him win the $50 bull prediction, according to you, the, the audience. So this one right here put up by Deckard, KC Chiefs win, win, uh, win number three. Let me, let me move this over here so I can keep this nice and tight. KC number... Three, Super Bowl. Let's go. Three Pete Mahomes will be talked about. Like you can't believe once that happens. Deckard, appreciate your fifty dollar hauler on the board. Deckard's doing it live. Deckard to the moon. Uh I I, I would I, again I know people are gonna say the, the brotherly shove is not as gonna gonna be as good without Kelsey and, and with Barkley there, but I don't think it's going to matter too much. I think what people need to understand is like, even if let's say they 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 ban the brotherly shove to the degree to the letter of the law, like to the to the way that it's performed and there's certain restrictions, they'll find a way to circumvent that legally. Like push the envelope and say, well, what can we do? Quarterbacks have been sneaking since the beginning of football. That's not going to stop. Like this man who can squat 600 pounds will still QB sneak, even if they ban it someday. But. To think, oh, because he won't be shoving a three-yard TD into the end zone using the brotherly shove, that he won't throw it or scramble and run for it or just QB sneak it normally or do a bootleg. Like, the fact that everybody assumes those TDs will be taken away from him just because he won't be scoring them. If if in, 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 in a, a fairy tale world they banned it, they're not banning it, though. And, and Barkley's going to get more work than... Probably Hurts owners will want because you'll be near the three-yard line and you'll be like, oh, man, if Barkley wasn't here, it would have been guaranteed Jalen. It still may be. So, it still may be. That, that, that news is, is, is really, it's more about jumping off the back of this news to, to kind of make it another point and give myself another chance to really come at the Jalen Hurts is going to help people win leagues because of the doubt surrounding his 2023 performance and that people think he dropped off, got figured out, isn't a good passer, he's only a good runner. You t if, if you were to take away the brotherly shove, which they're not taking away, but it, it's what fueled people to say he could fall off, he's not falling off. He's only going to get better. He's a calm, cool, collective guy. That just was handed a top five running back in Saqu Saquon Barkley. He's going to be unreal in 2024. Hertz is going to be a top three fantasy football quarterback. Hertz is going to, uh, I think, regain in any any doubter's mind top five NFL quarterback value. And if I was starting an organization today without any other players at all, without any other players at all, your boy. 
your boy would take him in one of the top five, maybe ten overall picks. I would take Jalen Hurts as one of the top ten overall picks if I had no players. Every NFL team had to start over and just grab players in the player pool like a fantasy draft in a sense. I'd be drafting him in the top ten. You know, he's a top five quarterback grab. Now, this news is a little bit more... The Cardinals are very capable of trading out and, and, and punting the Marvin Harrison Jr. situation. We want Marvin Harrison in Arizona. I'm a Cardinal fan, but I completely separate my Cardinal you know, fandom from my content. It doesn't affect it at all. You rarely ever hear me pump up a Cardinal that doesn't deserve it. I've been very critical of Kyler Murray more so than other people. And I, I very much am excited about what Kyler is bringing to the table now. He's a young guy. He's still learning. And the fact that Kyler is about to be handed, maybe, if we're lucky, in fantasy, if we're lucky, not just Cardinal fans, but in fantasy, if, if we're lucky to get Marvin to go to a very amazing spot to the Arizona Cardinals to play with Kyler Murray, then we're going to get fantasy football glory. My concern is that if anybody wanting to see something crazy happen, you're going to be wishing it all got undone. The grass is greener on the other side. And in this case right here, Marvin Harrison Jr., there are very few places that are actually better than Arizona. In fact, I can't really even think of very many at all other than maybe the dig situation gets resolved. They trade them, release them, whatever. They've been, they've been freeing up a bunch of money all offseason long. So something could be cooking. I know that the most recent news has been that, okay, Diggs is not going anywhere. You don't know that. No one knows that because the right offer could make them trade anybody except for Josh Allen. And so 28 overall, you know, what do you what do you do with that pick? Can you trade that pick and do some sort of, you know, move up using future first rounders? No, probably not. But, but if you ask me, hey, Smitty, can you concoct a trade that would put Marvin Harrison Jr. in a better spot? It would be almost impossible, but I could do it. I could cook up something. But it would be trying to get Buffalo's 28 up to number four, which is going to be an incredible, incredibly tough task. And I don't think the Cardinals have interest in Diggs. Diggs trading Diggs would almost be like just taking on his contract. Hey, give us something late just to say we did it. And you take on his contract for the future years. That's really what it's about. Um... Cardinals with this number four pick, assuming you couldn't get Buffalo into this spot, assuming you couldn't get maybe Indy into this spot, there aren't very many landing spots that are better than Arizona. So I don't think anybody should be wishing for any kind of weird, you know, crazy trade to happen because Marvin Harrison Jr. should go to Arizona. If Marvin Harrison Jr. doesn't go, let's say Arizona trades down to Tennessee and they take him, who wants that? What if the New York Giants move up to four to take them? I doubt they do, but what if what if the Arizona Cardinals trade out and go down somewhere in this territory? Let's just say with Minnesota. Minnesota wants in this four pick to get a quarterback. Now he goes to the Chargers. Probably uh, a step below Arizona, in my opinion, but right up there. Like, Chargers is a great spot for neighbors, for Marvin Harrison Jr., for Adunze. We want one of those wide receivers in LAC because it is like I said, grass is greener. You don't want you don't want to start wishing for better than the Chargers or Cardinals because you might get worse. These are really good spots. We want Arizona and Chargers uh, uh, these situations to uh, uh, consume two of the top three wide receivers. We want it. The Giants might be a team that, that takes the other one. I really hope the Atlanta Falcons take a Dunze over Chicago taking a Dunze. I really hope Adunze goes to the Chargers and he leapfrogs neighbors, which everyone says is impossible. Just wait until some workouts happen before you start drawing conclusions about how high everyone's going to have Adunze. When I said JD5 was going to climb up most people's board and be their number one overall quarterback, you're starting to see that happen. And even though Chicago is probably hell-bent on Caleb, thank God, because I don't want JD5 going anywhere near Chicago, the majority of people will start swinging toward the at least half of the people at least. We'll start swinging toward the JD5 as the number one quarterback in this draft class. Wait for it. I've been saying it from the beginning. He was the first Moon Man, Mars Man, Saturn Man that I put up. And we've got like 15 now. He was number one JD5. I want to make sure that was out there before we even got close to any sort of NFL draft coverage. And now JD5 is climbing like crazy. Um, And so I, I, I really think that uh, the Chargers 
we'll take one of these guys and the Cardinals will take one of the other wide receivers, but at the end of the day, you don't know. Why don't you know? Okay, back to the news. I'm sorry, I haven't even read it yet. Cardinals GM Monty Austin Fort said that the team is open for business and is willing to listen to trades for the number four overall pick. I didn't even like how eager he was to address this. It wasn't like, oh, we, you know, we'd do anything if it was right for the team. He's like, we're open for business. We're turning the light on. He even says something about it's not a strobe light because that'll hurt my eyes. Well, I don't like that the guy in charge of everything is talking about that he can't see because his eyes are, are bad. On top of that, he is open for business like it's some, like, it's some, like you know, uh, swap meet or some giveaway, some yard sale. Like he's going to just give away the 1.4. I'm really fearful, not just for, for NFL fandom sakes the cardinals you know i'm not just worried about that i want to breeze hall to go to the arizona cardinals like a part of me but then my logical side my fantasy football cap said i didn't want it i'd rather him be in new york he's better there and i, I didn't want it i didn't want it for I, I, if i could have pressed the button to send him to arizona and change the the draft selections i wouldn't have done it i would have kept breeze hall where he was in new york i'm smart about it i'm not biased about it i don't let it affect any of my thinking and I can honestly say Marvin Harrison to Arizona is not bad. It's one of the best scenarios. That is not bias. It, and for fantasy football owners, we don't want another team coming in and screwing us all up. I think if, if a team does trade up, though, our, our one solace is that if a team does trade up and the Cardinals trade out, it's for a quarterback. So that means probably worst case scenario, MHJ goes to the Chargers, which is a fantastic landing spot, too. That's kind of the way I look at it. Um... Tough to, to, to truly say, um, you know, what, what's going to end up happening. But the Cardinals, I, if the Cardinals trade out, my only hope would be this. If the Cardinals trade out, they better take Roma Dunze. You know, they better trade down to a spot where they can still get Roma Dunze. And then I would be, it's, I would still be excited because I love Roma Dunze a lot. He could be the next Jamar Chase. But do I want Marvin Harrison Jr.? Yes. Do I want... I mean, Kyler's going to take a big step forward. From a fantasy perspective, once he gets Kyler, or, well, once Kyler gets Marvin Harrison Jr., Kyler's got to move up our, our board. Kyler becomes a pretty darn good sleeper fantasy football quarterback in 2024. I don't think he'll come and, and, and sneak up on anybody. Uh, so, I don't know. Um... Let's go back over to, to the news. So th this is not my favorite news. Monty Austin Fort joking around and we're open for business. Let's just throw everything away. Um, we've done this before. Don't worry. Watch us, you know, try and sink the ship. You know, I'm Monty Austin Fort. Uh, hit that thumb up button on your way in the door. Appreciate everybody being here. This piece of news is, it's not really, it's just more smoke. But, but you know, people are, are reporting it all over no sources except for this time we have the athletic but it's like is it his opinion piece we don't even you know um 49ers will listen to trade offers for star wide receiver brandon iuk um though the first round uh, uh through the first round of the draft per the atlantic so <laughs> it's, it's like we go through this every day, and everyone's like, he's not going anywhere. We know he probably won't, but that's not a guarantee by any means. If the Steelers, the one of the most linked teams to a wide receiver move right now, like you got JJ rumors with Pittsburgh, you got Ayuk rumors to Pittsburgh, they're clearly in the business of poking around at wide receivers. So don't think for a second that it's not, not a possibility that the Pittsburgh Steelers get their hand on a wide receiver. But you look at this situation here and you say, okay, the 20 overall for Ayuk, they would strongly consider that trade. I know Niner fans don't agree. Niner fans think they're going to get a top five pick for Ayuk. You're not. You know, Ayuk's not a top five wide receiver. He he could be, he could produce top five wide receiver uh, numbers here or there in this system if they feed him right and Debo were to go down. And even if Debo didn't go down, he could have a, a top seven to 10 year, a, a lot of the, you know, every other year easily. So Ayuk is, a, Ayuk, Ayuk is a top 12 potential wide receiver, you know, nearly guaranteed if he stays healthy. One of the better route runners in, in the league. He's coming into his own. He looks really, really crispy on his routes. He's, Debo said you couldn't cover him in a phone booth, which is a, a very good analogy for somebody that you, you just can't wrap up. Like Ayuk is really smooth and crispy, but he's unhappy. And, and, and while there's, you know, humor in that nobody's got 
sources right now. Everybody's throwing mud at the wall. This doesn't have a single bit of evidence whatsoever to support it. It's a beat writer for the Atlantic probably talking about his opinion. There's no news or source or any sort of validation. But you got to wonder if the Steelers are poking around, can they create something? Just because it's not factual yet doesn't mean it won't come true. Look at the Kirk Cousins calling up Kyle Pitts and saying, what do you want for your jersey number? Kyle Pitts immediately retweeted out Mike Florio's comment on that and said, you're lying. That didn't happen. You'll just make up anything. And then it ended up coming true. Kirk Cousins did go to Atlanta. They did have a conversation about the jersey. And I bet some people think that Mike Florio was right. He wasn't. Kyle Pitts said, none of that happened. It's going to happen probably is what Kyle Pitts is thinking, but you're making up stuff. And that's what a lot of people are doing right now. But we still got to talk about it because it's widespread. And there's a real good chance that that some teams are going to inquire about, about Brandon Ayuk. Not to mention Brandon Ayuk is not super happy. And you can't say that he is because he's tweeting other teams' head coaches, creating drama for his team. That's not good. He's not happy. He's not, And I don't blame him because we saw Debo, when he's probably getting advice from Debo, I, we saw Debo struggle the year he sat out and tried to get his deal done early, and the Niners just wouldn't budge. We'll wait until the end. We're going to do this the Niner way. It caused all kinds of bad play for Debo in a horrible year for him that he has set on record he wants to put behind him and never have film like that again. And you don't want that for Ayuk. And Ayuk is certainly in that mode right now where he's like, he's he's getting a call from his agent. He's having conversations with his agent. He's having conversations with Debo. He's having conversations with other wide receivers. He's watching other wide receivers get paid bag like like uh, like Calvin Ridley. Four, $50 million, $92 million, four-year deal. Um, it, it, it's crazy. And, and then, and then you have, uh, Judy getting Christian Kirk money, you know, and that's a three-year deal, 41 or 42 million guaranteed. And then JJ, who's in trade rumors all by himself could get 33, 34, 35 million dollars annually. And if that comes down somehow early, that's going to vault up this guy's mindset of what he should get paid. And you can't blame him. That's the market. The market just went up. And the Niners are here going, we're going to wait until the end of the draft. And later on, it's the Niner way. And this guy's going to continue to get upset and want to tweet Tomlin, create crazy buzz and rumors. And then you got the players saying, leave us alone. Yeah, Debo saying the other day, leave us alone. Can't we have an offseason? What are you talking about? Like, look what we're look what we're seeing. Hey, do I look like Mike Tomlin? He tweeted out Ayuk trying to cause controversy. How are we gonna leave it alone? You're also in the public eye. You're also in the public eye. Part of your job is to deal with the media. And if you don't want to be on social media, and I think Debo might have deuced out for a little while. Then get, get off. Like, you're on social media. You're a, an NFL player. We're going to watch your every move. Especially when you are historically using your Twitter accounts to make statements. Now scrubbing social media or tweeting Mike Tomlin personally, are those are maneuvers and tactics to get your contract done. And then you're going to, no offense, I love Debo, but then Debo is going to complain about how we don't leave players alone. And then you got other analysts and people that, that try and like make waves by going, everybody should leave players alone, never address players. That's true. No, you you can't have it both ways. You can't tweet out what you want, want us to follow your Twitter account, want us to follow your Instagram, want us to notice you scrub your social media, want us to notice you've, you tweeted out a, a head coach to try and create some sort of pressure on your team. And then when you want to turn off the switch, like, Debo used the, the social media stuff the entire way. He was constantly posting stuff to try and trigger some sort of pressure. And then when you get your contract, you think you have a switch where you can just turn it off? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. And and, and I know that a few people like uh, Niner, Niners King saying it, they're being smart with Ayuk. They're not being smart with Ayuk. Bro, this is the same thing that they, they did with Debo. The same thing they did with Debo. Was it smart with Debo? No, it ended horribly that year for Debo. 
The worst thing you could do is make Ayuk sit here and drag this out, create animosity, create pressure, create drama. The Niners always have drama in the offseason. Here's more drama that's avoidable. Higgins wants his contract. Who knows? I don't think the Bengals are going to give it to him, but who knows if they do. If the Bengals give Higgins some sort of surprise monster contract, I don't think they will because this man wants top five wide receiver money. Unless he comes down on that and then he gets like a Ridley deal, then all of a sudden this gets worse. The pressure gets more, more, more and more pressure. And for anybody that doesn't think like the, the Niner folks in here, who I love, you know I love you. But if you don't think that there's a lot of thought right now between Agent and Ayuk about requesting a trade, listen to the words coming out of my mouth before you continue to angry type Angus. To request a trade to apply more pressure because there's very little leverage for an NFL player under contract the one leverage piece that they have is to apply pressure on the team the best way they can social media scrubbing social media posting creating chaos and havoc holding out not being there for the rapport building process that's a horrible thing that is leverage and then the most important one requesting a trade making teams come knock on the door i blame kyle for the drama says niners king that's what i'm i'm talking about all the time though you know, so there's no defense of it. And I think you agree. Kyle's to blame. Kyle's niner ways to blame. You force pressure for a team to come knocking and they say, hey, what's Ayuk worth? And you're not interested in trading him, right? Niner King, you don't want to trade Ayuk. And if Ayuk says we want to trade, does he want to be traded? No, he doesn't. You do it for leverage. But what happened with Tyreek Hill, he admitted this. His agent said, we're going to request a trade. Tyreek said, what? I don't want to go anywhere. He's like, it's a tactic. It's to apply pressure. It's to get conversations. It's to get the market to set your value. And if people are going to overpay you, the Chiefs can't for the life of them say, well, here's our offer. And you say, well, I just went over here and got 10 million more. They're, they can't. They can't give you their offer anymore. They know that you're going to be a problem. So the requesting of the trade is to say if the Niners are being cheap with Ayuk, and IU can get bigger, stronger offers, and they might not give grant his request to, to, to request a trade. Like that's another dramatic piece of this. But if IU requests a trade and he is granted that ability, because his agent's gonna say, Hey, IU, if we wait until after the draft, all of your suitors, they fill up their wide receiver rooms, they button them up, they draft rookies in a very good rookie wide receiver class. You don't want that. You want all these suitors available right now. Draft capital available. The Niners are, are almost 0% going to trade Ayuk if, let's say, things get really bad and Ayuk does actually want out because they disrespect him with a horrible offer and he wants out. You're not going to have the Niners want to trade him even a little bit if the draft capital can't help them this year. So if the Niners have even a shot of wanting to trade him or they're open-minded to it, you can, and you, as a Niner fan, you can't say the Niners aren't open-minded. They, Kyle said they'll listen to any trade offer. Remember, with Trey Lance, we'll listen to any offer. Doesn't mean they they want it. Doesn't mean they'll accept it. But the Niners won't even entertain an offer. They won't even entertain an offer if there isn't now draft capital attached. So this is if there is going to be a trade request, it needs to happen before the NFL draft. The only reason I think there won't be a, a request for a trade by Ayuk and his camp would be that the Niners and Ayuk have a backdoor conversation, a behind-the-scenes conversation, and they say, this is what we're dealing with. We'll do it. Here's what we're looking at. Do you like this? Yeah, okay, good. And then we don't know about it, and then it, you know, then it be becomes smooth. The, the way we'll know that is if, they, if Ayuk and his camp don't request a trade and Ayuk becomes really chill. If Ayuk stops all this nonsense, then you know things are maybe going good behind closed doors. And that would be the best uh, situation. But Ayuk is going to make waves. The Niners have zero cap space. Not anymore. They restructured Kittle. They actually have more than you think now. Just restructuring Kittle and another couple players. They actually opened up a lot of cap space doing that. Um, so, Niners think they can get a top 15 pick for Ayuk. Uh, I don't I don't know that they... they maybe they want that, but I don't think they, they think they're going to get that. They could get the 20... Um, the, the Chargers were very interested in the 17, reportedly. Some say it's complete bogus reporting. Could be. We don't really know. I think people saying that it's bogus reporting, 
there, there's more reason to say it is because there's no evidence of it. There's no source, but I think you can't say for certainty it doesn't exist. This, this, you know, did it leak somewhere? Did the Chargers leak it to try and, you know, get it out? Like no one really knows. You can't say with certainty there wasn't some sort of conversation. Maybe that exact deal. The Niners said that they didn't have that conversation, but they didn't have that conversation. The Niners came out and and said we did not. That's not true. The Zay Jones draft pick. Uh, 17 overall, Ayuk did not happen. Doesn't mean that a conversation didn't happen, though. People need to read between the lines. Who knows what's happening? They could have called and said, what do you, you know, we're kind of interested in Ayuk. You guys interested? Well, send something over. And then they hadn't had a conversation yet. We don't know. We don't know. Just like Mike Florio tried to make up, tried to make up something about Kyle Pitts and, and uh, Kirk Cousins. Kyle Pitts said, You'll, you guys will think of any, you guys will say anything. You'll make up anything. This media will make up anything. Mike Florio, I did, as Kyle Pitts retweeted Mike Florio and said, I didn't have a conversation with, with, uh, uh, with uh, Kirk Cousins about my jersey number. You're lying. And, and maybe Kirk Cousins and, and him talked and had a different conversation. Like, that's that, because it all played out that way. But it, Mike Florio was completely fabricating. The, the 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 meat and potatoes of the conversation. Um, tough to say what's going to happen with Ayuk. Uh, let let me just run a couple weird scenarios by you, okay? The Cardinals, I think there's a possibility, and this is going to piss off a lot of people. And I don't, I it's not that I don't care. I don't care to worry about people that can't have smoke screen conversations and talk about potential crazy trade scenarios. Okay, I'm not spreading rumors. I'm not saying I'm hearing anything. This is me spitballing ideas and what's feasible. If the Cardinals were to trade away MHJ, number four overall, what which is MHJ? The most logical thing is to go to the Minnesota Vikings and take Justin Jefferson. The Cardinals can win now. Monty Austin Ford, if he trades away the opportunity to get Marvin Harrison Jr., or at least Roma Dunze and a whole bunch of other draft capital, he should be fired. He should be fired immediately. You don't pass on the opportunity to at least get a Dunze and a bunch of other stuff, or Marvin Harrison Jr. or JJ. So I will be calling for Monty Austin for it to be removed immediately if he doesn't play this right. But if, let's say, the Cardinals trade number four to the Vikings... And the Vikings send, send a very costly JJ back. And for Vikings fans to say, no, nah, it's never going to happen. It might because he's going to command 32, 33, 34, 35 million dollars annually. So much so that the Cardinal fans are like, why would we do that? We got an almost free wide receiver starting over on a rookie deal that's said to be as good as JJ. Why wouldn't we want him and Kyler building together? So you can't say JJ for... Marvin Harrison Jr. isn't a straight-up fair swap when you consider the contract dollars that are going to be attached to JJ. And, and not to mention, if you make this trade, you're almost in unison announcing the contract extension. Like if the Cardinals were to take on this 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 swap, they would make the trade and almost immediately announce the new contract for JJ. And I don't know that the Cardinals want to pay that. I don't think the Cardinals will. But that's a scenario that we could kick around. And then the Vikings would trade 11 and 23 for the three. And the Vikings would have three and four and take their quarterback a choice, which I think they'd botch and take J.J. McCarthy. <laughs> and then they'd draft Marvin Harrison Jr. And we'd be like, what in the hell? You know, it, it, it's no different than J.J. catching footballs from Justin McCarthy here. That's one scenario. The Pittsburgh Steelers, I kicked this around the other night too when we talked about different variants of this, but like, what about the Steelers giving up a future first rounder, the number 20 overall, maybe even something else draft capital wise, and Justin Fields to the Minnesota Vikings for Justin Jefferson. So 20, future first rounder, maybe another future first rounder, and fields for JJ. Um, that, that that's something that nobody wants it to happen. I'm just saying these are all deals that that if you wanted to wake up one morning and crap your pants, these are all things that that I could I could see happening. Um, that would be weird and and crazy. Um, Ayuk for number twenty overall. Could I see that happening? Sure. Everyone's talking about Cincinnati. 
Higgins and multiple first rounders. It wouldn't cost one. Higgins and multiple first rounders. And this this uh at least this 18 and a future first rounder for JJ and JJ and hit and uh and uh Jamar Chase catching footballs from Joe Burrow. These are the crazy trade offers that you want me to concoct something crazy. Those are the big ones. And my last one would be that Harbaugh talks so much crap about this J.J. McCarthy being the number one overall quarterback. Well, go go get him then. Go get him at five. Draft him at five overall. Trade Justin Jefferson for the 11 and, and, and 23. You get 11, you get 23, maybe even another pick. And you send... Justin Herbert over to the Minnesota Vikings to throw footballs for a decade with JJ. That would be unbelievable. And you love this guy so much, right? Well, draft JJ McCarthy here. And then you're getting the 11 pick. Get Roma Dunze. You know, get Roma Dunze. Get Brian Thomas Jr. Then you get the 23 overall pick. Those are really three or four big time trade offers that I could cook up and concoct and you can say those are crazy. You can say those will never happen. I don't really care. I Those are the craziest deals that I could envision happening and be somewhat logical. Uh, that is all she wrote on the news segment here, ladies and gentlemen. Now the phone line segment is starting. Call into the show. Call, call, call into the show. Dial in, dial in, dial in, dial in. Your boy is here to answer the call. Your boy is here to, to talk about how Brees Hall is eight foot tall. Sebastian, you are live, young man. I, I think I got a take on the whole Cardinal situation. Maybe they're just wanting to entertain the offers because I was just talking to Trav in the chat about even the possibility of what what if the Patriots, for whatever reason, pick Marvin Harrison Jr.? How much does that drop the value of pick four for the Cardinals? Uh, yeah, we like, talked about this on I did I went on Twitter Spaces and talked about. Were you in there? Unfortunately, I was not. You were okay. I went on Twitter Spaces and we talked about how um, on Twitter, if the Cardinals, like one of the reasons they could be yeah having these conversations is a backup plan, a backdoor in place that if if MHJ goes, what do they do? Because if it's me and I'm not Monty Austin Ford and and I don't know what he's gonna do, but if it's me and in in worst case scenario something happens, I'm taking Roma Dunze, but I don't know if I'm trading down. Because if New England was to take Marvin Harrison Jr. here, I'd be afraid neighbors of Roman Dunze would go to the Chargers. I think it, the most I would trade is the six, right? And that way I'd get neighbors yeah. or a Dunze. But I wouldn't trade any deeper than that. I wouldn't want anybody stepping on the idea of getting one of those two wide receivers. But um, I don't know. New England could do it, but they're so inept in terms of getting wide receivers and understanding wide receiver value. Like, even right now, like, they're accumulating nothing. And and maybe that's because they're setting up to take an elite wide receiver and all these are, you know, peripheral wide receivers. Maybe. I don't know, though. I don't know. I've, I got a weird vibe that they are not spending money on, on wide receivers. They're not interested. I don't know. And not to mention, like, New England's so hard up for a quarterback. I don't know that they can... There are three or four quarterbacks that could be the number one overall quarterback in another draft, and I think that New England Patriots are not going to pass up on getting like a Drake May. Uh, you hear a lot of rumors that they trade down, and they could. They could go get 11 and 23 from the Minnesota Vikings. That would probably be trade number five or six that I would cook up. So 11 and 23 for the New England Patriots, uh, three. And then the Vikings could take their quarterback at three. And then, you know, if New England's like, we don't like Drake May, which is what people are insinuating, but we don't fully know that, then they could grab Bo Nix or Penix Jr. at 11, or they, they punt it and they look like idiots. I don't know. I, I just, I don't yeah. trust the Patriots at all, but I think if I'm the Arizona Cardinals, I, I look at it like Roma Dune says our backup plan. I just don't know if, if Austin Ford has that mindset. Yeah, it's tricky because you just don't know what the Patriots are going to do. You know, just the decisions they've made, really, ever since Tom Brady left. And 
I mean, 20 years before, like, was the last time they even had a first-round quarterback. So, it's, I don't know. It's, it's super tricky, honestly. Mm-hmm. And then I was going to ask you, too, about what, what are you thinking of Chase Brown and Zach Moss? Because they're going at 109 and 114 ADP. Well, yeah. What are you thinking about? So, Underdog Fantasy promo code Smitty. Guys, please uh, hit this link right here and, and sign up so you guys can be a part of the drafts that we do during the graveyard shifts here on on, on Underdog so there's the link right there. Hit that link. Um, but the ADP for uh, for these guys will will climb. I don't I don't think they'll stay. I think if you're getting Moss at anywhere near like 90, even it's a home run. You know, it's a it's a total home run. Now, Chase Brown, I don't know. I, I definitely could cuff them together. I mean, I love the idea of that if they're both in the hundreds, of course. But I I think Zach Moss is going to climb high. I don't, maybe he doesn't climb as high as I, I anticipate, but he'll climb a lot higher than where he is now. Yeah, because, I mean, I, I've been buying a lot of shares of both because I've been doing some bangle stacks. And I, I don't know. I, I just thought it was pretty interesting because I'm sure Moss is going to be the starter, but Browning's also up and coming. And, and really, all the Bengals besides Jamar Chase are being severely undervalued. Yeah. Yeah, Joe Burrow is one of the biggest steals in fantasy. Uh, Jonathan says the the brother of Ray Donovan back to say, bring on smoke. I love these crazy hypotheticals, trade scenarios. JJ could definitely be traded. Who knows? Thank you, uh, Bunchy. Appreciate you, pal. Bunchy, in the building, my boy. Um, appreciate your super chat, bro. And Decker, thank you for yours as well. So, yeah, I, I don't know. And, and Travis said, do we have uh, notifications for the live Twitter spaces when I do them? I should have put it. I, I normally will put it in the announcement chat and probably going live chat. I probably will do that next time. Put the link in there. I was in the car. I was driving and uh, I, I did it randomly. So next time I'll, I'll make sure to look out for you guys. I'm sorry about that. Zach Moss looked good, says Birdman. I agree. And, you know, I, I, I think Zach Moss, while while I wanted the Bengals to make a bigger splash at RB, taking Barkley, taking Henry, taking uh, Jacobs, you know, and, and really hitting a home run, Moss was very, very productive in Indy. So much so that even after JT got his big contract, Moss didn't go away, you know. So I, I really do like him, but I don't know how much I can put faith in, faith in him as a high-end, like, running back, too. I think where he's going ADP wise, 90s, 100s is fantastic. I'm I'm in all day long on that, all day long. Motion detected at the front door. What what else is up, bro? That's all I got for now. I'll come back if I have another quality question. All right, cool man. Appreciate you, Ziggy. Show me the front Good door. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's Miss Smitty. I'm pretty, yeah, it is. Ziggy off. Um. Minnesota ha- uh, hasn't drafted a top 10 QB since Culpepper, says Joe. Um, true? Like, tr- true that there's some doubt that they might make the right move, but Joe, they're trading up. And, you know, we once did a live stream in total panic mode because the Darnold co- comment, hey, the you know, Darnold is the backup plan if the Vikings lose Kirk Cousins to free agency. And we're like, no, that can't be. And then as soon as Cousins went, Darnold was signed. And it, it were like, holy crap, there's some truth to this, right? But as soon as the, the Vikings accumulated another draft pick, and now they've got the 23 and 11, and they're trying to combine these to move up, it's pretty apparent they're going after a QB. And I think at 11, they take Knicks or Penix Jr. The only thing that would make you right, Joe, is if they are trying to move up but can't, and at 11, they don't want to take a quarterback because they don't like Penix Jr. or Bo Nix, and, and they fail to utilize the combination to get into a higher pick. That, that would be the only thing I could see backfiring on anybody's expectation that the Vikings are drafting a rookie quarterback. But every everything I'm seeing and hearing is, is very much pointing toward the Vikings taking one of the, the top four quarterbacks, top five quarterbacks. Where's where's Drake May? Um, I, I, I You know, I don't mind Drake May. I just think that, like J.J. McCarthy, there's a little bit too much hype around them. I think that we don't know how any of these guys are going to develop at the next level. You know, Tom Brady was a nothing burger coming out of of college. He had a 2,200-yard and 2,400, I believe, yard a season back-to-back. I think it was like both were like 2,200 yards, somewhere around there. He did nothing. Nothing to show for. You didn't know what he was going to do. You never know how good a QB is going to look. 
And situation is everything. And if Drake May goes to New England with no wide receivers, I don't like it. Do I like it long term? Maybe, but not not for sure. Do I like Drake May in Washington with, with Adam Peters pulling all the strings and putting a lot of talent around him? Absolutely. Like Drake May in Washington would be fantastic. JD5 in New England without any wide receivers is better than Drake May because like AR5, we can see AR5 carry the team fantasy-wise all by himself. JD5 will do some of that, but JD5 will be lesser, and I'll be very disappointed, lesser upside in New England than in Washington by a mile. And, and, and JD5 in Chicago will really piss me off too. And I think everybody's assuming JD5 doesn't look so good that we don't hear even Chicago, even if they're trying to like create smoke for more trades, whatever, hear Chicago wavering. I promise you, we will start hearing way more buzz, maybe even out of Chicago, that JD5 should be taken. And you will see the fan base start to get a little bit divided on which quarterback should be drafted. Because Caleb Williams, who cried in mama's arms after he lost you know, a big stage game, Really recently, I put it on my Instagram, Caleb Williams weeping in, in mama's arms. Um, I, I have this this up on my Instagram, and it, it's, it's, it's crazy um, when you watch it. And I'm not trying to say that, that crying is a bad thing, okay? Let me see if I can actually get the actual clip because that's, that's too small to show you. But like crying in mama's arms after a loss, not saying crying is necessarily the end of the world for 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 a person uh, like i'm not saying that at all but he after a loss climbing into mama's arms let me show you the the video the footage of him actually climbing in but right here he's climbing up into mama's arms getting coddled she covers him protects him with the paper and and then you see him start to weep like right here this is where you know he starts weeping you see his, his stomach going up like he's weeping he's weeping and you can say, Smitty, that's just him being passionate. I I don't look at it that way. I'm not I'm not mad at him as a person. I'm not saying anything negative about him in some like bigger context, other than if I'm a player and I'm looking to this man to lead me during thick and thin, I want Jalen Hurts' demeanor. I want somebody that says we lost, we're gonna go out and win next week. I don't want a quarterback that will climb into his mama's arms at the front door. in this in the stands climb into his mama's arms ziggy off and weep and cry and 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 literally be shaking in his mama's arms it doesn't make sense and, and again not trying to suggest in any way shape or form that you can't cry in life or that there's something horrible about his character but that is not a leader of men That, that, that this is not a leader this is not a leader of men right here that you as a player want to follow and say this guy's taking us into battle and and then and then when they reviewed it or when they asked him in an interview later it, it like what do you what do you think about the loss he said i want to go home and cuddle with my dog and and just like watch I, I think he said watch tv and cuddle with my dog and it's like it's like that's not that's not that's not what you want to hear from your commander in chief of your team um so it's crazy bro it's crazy uh huge reach okay sure pal <laughs> ask let's take take a poll ask around who wants that out of their quarterback I honestly think it's a, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, if he plays for the Bears, he will be crying 12 times a year. I agree. Like, his mom better be on standby on all the road games, home games, ready to console him because he's going to have a lot of tears being shed in that Chicago Bears system because they set up. It's just crazy to me. Uh, leader of men like Jimmy. Come on, Niner King. Get out of here with the Jimmy Garoppolo stuff. I mean, give me a break. I'm not a Caleb fan by any means, but I'm bored to death of this argument. Well, Kerry, that's the first time we've ever talked about that piece of it, to be honest with you. So, uh, anyway, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. We all cried in moments in Mama's arms. I, not not as a grown man on the football field, Niners. I don't know about you, but I, I, I you don't you don't climb into Mama's arms on a big stage. 
and 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 that doesn't show leadership. That doesn't show your ability. The NFL is a tough business. It's all mental. It's all mental. Um, so that's not what I, that's not a good look. The behavior you'll see in a little league baseball, not a grown man. Exactly, says uh, Jonathan. If Caleb struggled early, that Chicago locker room is going to be rough. Also, uh, the fan base, the fan bases of 31 other NFL teams are going to roast him on a daily basis. They lose a game. There's going to be crying memes everywhere. It's going to be insane. Um, I still feel Fields had the best chance. Ag ag agreed. Fields, Fields was Fields with Marvin Harrison Jr. without Shane Waldron was the only, the only answer I think. Um, what what's up, Sebastian? I, I just wanted to say something real quick for everyone, like be, being higher on Caleb at, at like the one point one. When when you think of one point one, I mean look, look at look at Joe Burrow. That that's a true one point one. Calm, cool, collected. Everybody knew he's going to one. You know what they like, said about you know what they said about Joe Burrow, bro, and and you can take said. this as a negative if you want, but they said that Joe Burrow has the the um, temperament of a serial killer. I don't know if you've ever heard that. If anybody's ever heard that, there, it's a serious. Somebody said that he's almost unaffected by stress and drama to the point where his heart rate doesn't raise in a crazy situation. And so yes, if Joe Burrow loses. A big game. If Joe and, and let me just also clarify that what I'm describing as crying, like let's say somebody puts um let, we'll just let's let's just hit that right there. There we go. We got a few haters in the chat today. If someone puts their towel over their head and they start crying because they lose the Super Bowl, that's different. You know, I'm not I'm not ripping on a player that's got tears going down their eye. And I tore my ACL, ripped my knee up to shreds, and I was screaming and yelling so loud. There was te there were tears coming out of my eyes because the pain was so gruesome. Nothing wrong with crying in life, and I said that from the jump. But when you look at Joe Burrow and Joe Burrow loses a Super Bowl and he walks off upset, he's clearly angry. Maybe his eyes are watering or whatever. I don't judge that at all. Debo Samuel or Ayuk or I don't, I don't remember which one, if any of them cried. If they put their 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 uh, towel over their head and they had tears or whatever, not a problem at all. That There's nothing that makes a player less of a man because they shed a tear. There's a stark difference between that, being on a cart with your knee tore up with a towel over your head because your body's emotionally crying, or losing a Super Bowl and you, your heart was in it and you cry a little bit. Nothing wrong with that at all. That doesn't make you less of a man at all. But there's a stark difference between climbing up and crawling into your mother's lap. And weeping. In front of everybody. And then when you're asked later. Hey, want to talk about that? I just want to go home and cuddle with my dog, is what he said. And climb in bed and cuddle with my dog. And I think he said, watch, you know, Netflix or TV. It's it's crazy, bro. It's, it's cra crazy to try and compare crying at the end of a game and that. Joe Burrow, to my point, Joe Burrow, they said, Joe Burrow under pressure it has the temperament and heart rate of a serial killer. He does not get phased. That's what I want my field general doing and acting like and, and having that temperament. I don't want somebody that's going to crack and literally go into the fetal position and start weeping. Exactly. <laughs> that's um, what I'm saying. Joe Burrow <laughs> is a one overall quarterback. Uh, Caleb is, is it's a what? Joe Burrow is a one overall quarterback. Caleb is not yeah, a, a it, first. Burrow's up here. Caleb is dead. There's not even. Yeah. Th does Caleb have He's the arm strength and, and some talent? Sure. Uh, but, you know, we definitely don't have, you know, we have a lot of quarterbacks. Zach Wilson, you know, um, a lot of quarterbacks had great arms. Doesn't matter. You know, it didn't matter. Just because Zach Wilson looked amazing at his pro day, and he did. If anybody wants to pretend differently, they watch a different pro day or they're not able to admit their 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 mistaken judgment on the guy because I'm admitting my mistake. 
Zach Wilson looked phenomenal at his pro day. It doesn't matter how good your arm strength is. What happens when you get to the next level, everyone's elite. And it's Tom Brady. What did Tom Brady do mentally? He was stronger than everybody. Physically, he wasn't. No, every he was Tom Brady was overlooked by everyone coming into the NFL. Everybody. Oh, he looked like a high schooler. He looked he looked like garbage. And he was mentally stronger than anybody. He was mentally hungrier than anybody. And if someone thinks that the passion Caleb showed in those situations equals Joe Burrow's temperament in just a different way, like, no thanks. No thanks. Jalen da Jaden Daniels is the number one rookie QB. I I'd, I'd rather have Penix Jr. over Caleb. I'd rather have Bo Nix over Caleb. I'd rather have Drake May over Caleb. Caleb is is right there with JJ McCarthy as the fourth fifth quarterback in this draft class. And you can say you can say it's crazy all you want. I, I I care about you and your opinion, whoever you are. I'm not saying I don't care, but I don't care that we disagree and i i i have zero desire for you to convince me because i've already looked at it i promise you as much as anything um yeah the speed as perp said here the speed and pressure of the nfl is a whole new monster uh the past is uh the past is an idea it means less at this level says uh perps perps appreciate your your message here um Travis, you're live. Hey, um, <clears throat> one thing I don't understand either is if, uh, if this was any other type of red flag, aside from like him being kind of, I don't know what you would call him, emotionally sensitive or whatever we want to call it. If this was any other red Fragile. flag. Fragile Freddy. People would be ripping him apart. Mm -hmm. You know, if it was a physical thing. I mean, just think of like Kenny Pickett's hands. You know, something as small as that, they tore him to shreds, which, you know, might have been worse. Detected but at the front door. If it was a behavioral thing, you know, it could be a million things, but for some reason, I don't know. Get ready to adjust and adapt, Niners, because you're, you're the one that's going to be adapting. Um, it's just odd, because <laughs> usually people jump all over the red flags, you know. Yeah, well, everyone has, and we have the fatigue, the the top quarterback fatigue syndrome settling in too. And I've yeah. I've described this as well. This happens in politics too, when a when a candidate's been announced for a long enough time, and somebody comes out of nowhere, then it's like you're so fatigued. You're like, what's this over here? This is a good, this is a good new, you know, fresh look. And and so you know that's kind of I think also why there's a little bit of hate toward Caleb, and I've admitted that there's some probably some unfair physical um mm -hmm. uh limitation type takes out there the tools. you know he's definitely got all the tools the problem is you know his off script you know uh tendencies that he's probably very very used to now are going to be hard to break and you know chicago's not chicago's not as good of a situation as people think like you've got a 32 year old wide receiver that played phenomenal last year but the the odds of him staying healthy at 32 years old when he's an injury-prone labeled wide receiver anyway, changing teams, learning a new offense, trying to build rapport with a rookie quarterback, it's going to be a rough year. There might be some hospital balls mixed in there because Caleb is trying to get used to NFL defenses and trying to stay on script, which he's not used to, whether he did in 2022 or not. You're not schooling me, telling me any of this. Oh, in 2022, go watch the film. I did. I've watched it all. I don't need anybody to fantasy explain me on what Caleb did in 2022 versus 2023. But you have an off-script, off-schedule quarterback coming in to try and get rid of those tendencies and learn to read NFL defenses when he's a, a fragile Freddy. And then you've got you've got DJ Moore and and Allen who I, I like them a lot on paper, but this is in Swift. I mean Swift is he was abused as an RB between the tackles, and that's not even his game. Part of me wonders how much tread he's got left just by being forced to be a between the tackles full time workhorse running back, which he did an amazing job by the way. Let's send him to the moon. He to was the moon. a he was a moon man. We loved what Swift did last year, but I think all of us, including myself are a little shocked at how much the Eagles did not try and throw to him, which I think something that Barkley will see yeah. differently a little bit because you've got Kellen Moore now in 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 uh, Philly. Yeah. But it's like Swift, Keenan Allen, uh, DJ Moore. We know what DJ Moore is with Fields. We don't really know what he is in this situation. Rookie quarterback, 
the the track record and 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 you've got Shane Waldron. I mean, well, that that's no, the point you. I was going to make too is with the off script stuff. <clears throat> so I've heard from a lot of Chicago fans, could be right, could be wrong, that Getsy wanted to do more, and it could all be bull, but Getsy wanted to let Field play more like he would, he should play. Even Flus was trying to make him a pocket quarterback and kept on doing that. Well, Shane Waldron, I think Eberflus and Coles brought in Waldron because he fits more with Eberflus's mindset. Which I is don't gonna think be they fired. want a quarterback that runs around. Which is going to get fired. Yeah. Eberflus's mindset's to get fired after one year. Should have been Same fired. Reason why you said should have been fired already. That they probably wouldn't take Daniels because they don't want another quarterback they don't. that goes off script and runs around and. So it's like, you know, I'm surprised they, they don't fall in love with Drake May, who can, you know, who can move around. But Mark more, my words, quote, what, unquote, traditional. whether it's smoke yeah. or not, based on polls trying to, you know, create trade buzz even further, right? Um, mark my words, there will be so much other quarterback being considered to Chicago talk coming mm-hmm. in the coming weeks. If anybody thinks that they're just going to telegraph that it's Caleb and they're not going to even explore the idea of, of floating anything out there, no. you know, it, it's it's crazy to me. I'm overdoing it with the Caleb Williams because you don't like Williams because you don't like him as a QB. If anything, this shows how much he cares. You should be ashamed of yourself, Smitty. Let the man cry in peace. Um, shame on you. Shame on you. <laughs> we'll send you on a lap. <laughs> I, it, you know, you can tell when somebody, and I don't, I don't take it offensively. Like it, it, he, he wants to be a no. Caleb supporter. I don't take it offensively because I know that like this is hard to hear and it hits you in the gut. I'm not even saying I'll be right, but I can understand the emotions of somebody being told that if you're a Bears fan, especially that your quarterback's a a fragile Freddy, you're going to be like defensive of them. And I, I respect that defense. You know, you, you, you tell me realist, you tell me to, you tell me to be ashamed of myself, but <laughs> you got, you got a, you got a, a long road ahead of you, bro, before you could convince me that there, there's anything here. Fields never did it in three years. This is always one of the funniest takes that makes me laugh. I, I get a, I get a chuckle out of this one. It's like, he didn't do it in three. He didn't do it with what, what was he given? <laughs> like you, you send him out there with 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 sticks and tell him to fight a war, while people have got weapons. And you say, here, here's two, you Isn't know, it? here's two tree twigs. Go, go fight a fight. And hopefully, if you make it come back, we'll, we'll have a job for you. <laughs> like feel, and especially in 2022, when they stripped the entire team down to janitors and 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 water boys. Like you had water. We didn't even know all right. of the receivers by name. That were catching footballs for Justin Fields in 2022. He was, and he had 11 INT. He only had 11 INTs, impromptuing his entire yeah. season, running for 11:43. He ran for 1143 right. yards in in <clears throat> in a season where he had nobody to throw to. <laughs> like like DJ Moore Fields gets was, there. They failed Fields. What? The second DJ Moore gets. Second DJ Moore gets there. He has a career year with Fields. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so the, the, the second he had a, you know, not even top five, but, you know, top 10, top 15 uh, wide receiver, you saw the production those guys had. I mean, you even saw, you know, Komet <laughs> with flashes, you know, with, with Fields. Him and Fields work out pretty well together. And they just needed more help between the offensive line and they could have used another weapon and mm-hmm. they didn't support him. I mean, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's Fields, the, it'll be like, here for the for the people that don't watch every show, I get it. You don't really know my full Fields take. But listen to me now. Okay, look into my glasses, all right? I'm telling you right now, Fields is broken. And, and I don't know how many times I got to repeat this. Do I think he's a lock to, to work out? No, it's a gamble. I believe it's a gamble it's going to pay off big time. Number one, the NFL is a mental game as much as it's a physical game. Physical game, And as we allude, alluded to earlier, everybody that makes the NFL is an elite player on some level. 
And it all comes down to how they progress. Tom Brady was not as elite physically as even probably... I would say when he entered the league, he was not even remotely close to being a top 32 quarterback physically at, at all. And he was so strong mentally, he got better, worked harder, and became one of the most elite players we'll ever see play any sport from a mental perspective, uh, especially. And so, you know, we look at we look at certain situations and we say, okay, is Fields broken? Yes. Is Fields set up for success in Pittsburgh? Probably, because he's got his back to the wall. He's got nothing. No one. To, he's, he's not looking over his shoulder. No one's behind him. He's the one nipping at the heels of Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson's the one that's going to have to get used to the infancy of the offense being un, unveiled under Arthur Smith, and the save the day mentality that Minshew's lived on, that Ryan Fitzpatrick has lived and made his his mark on. Fields is going to enter a scenario if he doesn't enter week one and it'll still feel that way in week one if he comes in and saves the day but he'll enter a scenario at some point where he is the savior and he's got nothing but positive vibes and he that's gonna repair him more than if he was to go in as a starter and russell wilson was nipping at his heels so situation is everything it, it, it is it is everything a fresh start is such a weight off the shoulders for him, I'm sure. Yeah. Just to be able to go in a new place and have people that want you, you know, like, it's just, you know. Yeah, it's it's, it's, cra it's, cra it's crazy. It's crazy. As I've said for, for, I don't know, days straight now, the, the 30 teams that passed on fields at the price tag should be ashamed of themselves. The Cardinals should be ashamed of themselves. Every team in the National Football League that didn't say, hey, and everyone's going to say Smitty, but the the for the Bears wanted to do right by Fields, and they were going to reject anything that he. No, you don't understand how it works. A six round pick ham sandwich. Of course, they're going to say, well, if we're trading you for a ham yeah. sandwich, where do you want to go? We'll let you go wherever you want. It's a ham sandwich. But if if a team was smart enough and said, here's a fourth rounder, if thirty teams would have said, here's a fourth rounder, that is conditionally a two, if he ends up playing 51% of our snaps. And especially if that team had an elite quarterback like Joe Burrow or Josh Allen, the likelihood of that turning into a two wouldn't have even happened anyway, right? Unless an injury happened. But but you go to the team and you say, here's a four that conditionally becomes a two, or you put an even crazier uh, contingency into it. 30 teams should be ashamed of themselves. He is the best quarterback in the National Football League that's riding the pine right now. And and the Steelers were brilliant. Aside from bringing in Arthur Smith, the Steelers have been brilliant right now. And and Khan is the con man they call him. I agree that he's he's like a he's like an Adam Peters in a way, the way he's maneuvering this thing. I don't know where he's been this whole time, but uh, I love what's what what he's doing and I just don't Arthur Smith's a big crutch. He's a big problem. But good God, uh, I don't understand how 30 teams, they should be ashamed of themselves. I've, I've said this for like maybe 60, 72 straight hours on every single live stream. 30 teams should be absolutely ashamed of themselves, including the Cardinals. Including the Cardinals. The Cardinals traded, they traded Rondell Moore for Ritter instead of keeping Rondell Moore and trading, let's say, a fourth rounder. And, and Ritter was a third round pick, you know? Yeah. You can get fields for at worst, at best, at worst, whatever, a fourth round pick. Oh uh, yeah. So anyway, anybody else wants to, to call me, in? To me, it's just to me, it's just simple. Like there, there's more to it, but look at the team and say, are they surrounding your quarterback with weapons in an offensive line, or are they? working to do that you know and if they are they're probably going to go somewhere like i give the bears credit you know that they're trying to i just don't necessarily think they're making the right moves or that they can develop a quarterback with the coaches they have there yeah yeah it's gonna be interesting, bro. Uh, I know the Caleb take. Uh, like I'm even looking on my Instagram. So I have this this videos up on this video that I've been showing is up on uh, Instagram, and 
you know, I know a lot of people aren't, uh, some people are taking it the way I thought. They don't like Caleb either, you know, and they're, they're like, this guy's not going to end up doing it. But I know a lot of people are taking it wrong, especially Bears fans, and they're like, "God, this is ridiculous. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna see," and that's fine. And, and again, I don't, I don't blame like, like the guy that that that, that was mad at me. You know, obviously he's a Bears fan. Um, I don't blame anybody for being passionately upset that that my take, you know, steps on their their prospective future. You know, the like that. No one wants to hear me say you're a Bears fan. Caleb's yeah. going to bust. No Bears fan wants to hear that, and I don't blame him. You know, I'm not going to hold you against you if you get pissed off real quick, but be respectful in the chat, I'll tell you that. Um, borderline, borderline disrespectful on that last comma, but I let it slide because I know how pissed off he is. But good God. What? You know, I just That's hope like, Jaden Daniels like... doesn't go to Chicago. I hope Jaden Daniels doesn't increase his value so yeah. much that he goes to Chicago. I'll be right. so pissed off. I um well that's like I don't like hearing the thoughts that the Patriots could take the eleven twenty three and give their third to the Vikings, but realistically I have to I have to realize it's a possibility because that's where they put themselves as a franchise. Now, I don't think they'd do it without getting, you know, a, a first on top of that, like next year's first as well, because you can hold those picks hostage. You know, a lot, a lot of years you see teams willing to give up that extra first rounder, but I have to, you know, understand that that possibility is there. And like, you know, so as much as you're a Bears fan, you, should, you have to understand that you have not been good at uh, developing quarterbacks really ever. So, you know, yeah. hopefully for their sake, but yeah, it's, it's a reality gonna... where it doesn't work. You know, you know what's crazy is like we think this QB class is going to be lit, but I mean we thought that Zach Wilson class was going to be the same. Like anybody in here is when, lying to themselves if they weren't at that moment feeling the exact same way about this class, about that class. That class was well, garbage. And right, right there we talk about Fields didn't get support, Wilson didn't have enough support, Mac Jones didn't have enough support. No Trey matter what you think of the guys. Yeah, Trey got injured and gave up on. I I hope Trey Lance right. gets a shot again. I really do. I just the problem is, is someone too. wants to know if I think he will do well. I don't know that he will because you you there's an expiration date on your your progression mm -hmm. and your ability to life. capture the moment. It's like you know you know that fire burns out and there's no way to reignite it. You know, so I I don't know I don't know if Trey got a shot and he failed. I wouldn't even really it was it's not it's, it might not even be the same player at this point. So I wouldn't even like have judgment about the previous. I, I believe I believe Trey was worse when he finally got the job and then got injured right away than his rookie year. I think his rookie year he was ready, and I think it's a great mistake to never put a top ten overall pick that's a quarterback into the lineup immediately. If a team drafts a top ten overall quarterback inside the top ten, top twelve even, and they don't start him right right away, they have no business taking him. You, you have to let the quarterbacks translate at such a different level. This is not Patrick. I mean, Patrick Mahomes would have probably translated too. Just because he wasn't used doesn't mean it was a, a move that made him better. You know, and it's not, this isn't Jordan Love. Jordan Love was drafted like 87 years ago. Like we're, we're literally looking at a new evolution of the quarterback and they step right in now. And if you take Trey Lance at number three overall, and you don't use him. Why did you draft him? And they completely screwed up Trey. They broke him. They injured him. And, and you know, maybe Dak goes down. I'm not wishing that upon anybody, of course. And Trey gets in there and does works magic. Who the hell knows? Who the hell knows? He's in Dallas, Mealy. He's in Dallas. Where you been, Mealy? We haven't seen you in forever. Uh... Yeah, I, I don't know. I know the Caleb conversation pisses off a lot of people. I, I, and I'm not trying to, like, ruffle feathers with it, to be honest with you. But, I mean, I just don't know how. Like, I have a couple comments. Like, here's a comment on Instagram. It says, dumb take on the Caleb Williams, you know, crying in mama's arms thing. And he says, players cry all the time. Clearly, he doesn't understand my take, really. Because my take is you cry with a, a towel over your head when you tear your knee. Or you cry at the end of a game that's different. 
You know, there's nothing wrong with shedding a tear and being emotional. It's different to, in front of everyone, not have the reserve to say, you know, mama, meet me in the locker room and let me, you know, curl up in a ball there. He literally climbs into the stands and gets in not the fetal normal. position. He gets into the fetal position and weeps. That's not, yeah, it's not normal. Like, anybody who wants to defend him is a Bears fan because they're they're trying to make the best of the situation, right? There's no there's no other explanation. Like how 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 could anybody say that that's normal behavior? It's not. Joe Burrow would never he would smoke a cigar during a loss. Joe Burrow will light one up. I, it, it doesn't make any sense. You're not you're not a leader if you crawl into mama's lap in the stands. You're not. You're not a leader. Maybe he becomes a leader. Maybe maybe he becomes a leader. But you're not. That's not a. That's, Aaron Rodgers did that. Oh God, if Aaron Rodgers cry, cry, <laughs> he good cried. Good God. Anywhere. Good God. <laughs> and, and being a mama's boy is not a big deal. Crying after you lose the Super Bowl while you're standing on the sideline watching the other team celebrate is not a big deal. Crawling into mama's lap in the front row and and having her cover your face because in and, and just weeping. It's not like he hugged her and he cried a little. He was in the fetal position on her lap, crying, weeping. And 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 for the comments are like like this one, everybody's different, correct. Not everybody's a leader of men. Not everybody's gonna go out there as a field general and command a whole entire team that needs to respect you and say this guy can take us through a storm. So you're correct. Not every everybody is different, and that's why Caleb's gonna fail if he doesn't change all of this in a, overnight. Like, how is that gonna happen? I don't know. He gets hit on the head and has a, a no. amnesia. Doesn't remember who he is yeah. and learns how to become somebody different. Maybe. No one's saying it. he shouldn't be like that or knocking him as a person or anything like that. But as like you said, a leader of an NFL football team and the number one pick in the draft. That's a red flag. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, man. Odd that you have to preface it. Yeah. It's crazy, bro. Um, what else you got, bro? Um, uh, just with the uh, I forget who it was I was talking to that called in uh, about the, the Patriots taking that. Harrison at three. I think there's a sliver of a chance that could happen. I think like a couple weeks ago, there was more of a chance. I I really am starting to feel like unless they trade out of the pick, I'm starting to feel like they're just going to sit there and take either Daniels or May. And it's a rare world where, where you think they like them both equally. You have to like one better than the other. And so that worries me a little bit if a team is just sitting and taking who falls to them because that's that's what they did with Mac Jones. Yeah, they waited. You know, granted it was a deeper pick, but um, I, I've said all along whether it's Arizona or the Patriots or Washington, which I don't think it will be, but um, with the Vikings, uh, and I and I understand the Vikings fans. If, if I was a team moving up, I'd be excited too, but. I've, I've clicked on some Viking stuff just to see what their word is. And they've, like, stuff like there's a handshake deal, the deal is done, like, stuff like that. And it's like, not yet, because they haven't even done visits with the, with these players, most of them. And they haven't had all their pro days. And why would you even do a trade now when, you know, look at the history of things. Teams are willing to give up way more closer to the draft. Yeah. When it gets close to the draft, you can squeeze that extra pick out. So I sure yeah. hope they don't do it. I can't see I can't see them or Arizona making a trade until pretty close to the draft. Yeah, again, all, all of my wild trade Arizona scenarios problem, all my wild trade scenarios are are just speculation. Obviously there's no there's sure. no buzz at all, but but again, eleven and twenty three to the Patriots for the number three overall pick, very possible to have. Probably the most likely trade to happen of all of the ones that I've kicked around. The Cardinals trading... Me. Huh? No, no, go ahead. Oh, the Cardinals trading down, I don't know how far, is probably the second most likely scenario that I... And I, I hate that idea uh, around. 
Chicago trading down one or two picks is possible if they end up not wanting Caleb because <laughs> they know Washington will want him. So, like, let's say they say to themselves, I don't know, the 85 looks great. May May's selling us. We don't know what's going to happen in the coming weeks. People are crazy. They think it's all locked in. Then you have that potential rumor. Um, the, the let's see, I, I would say Pittsburgh somehow making a trade. You know, they're trying to get wide receivers. That's possible. Indy moving up to get a, a Dunze or neighbors would be unbelievable. Um, Minnesota, yeah, th those are the most likely. And then JJ being involved in a trade, whether it's to Pittsburgh or whether it's the Arizona Cardinals for the number four, those are all like Ayuk going to the Bengals for Higgins, probably not going to happen. But like all these things being kicked around, like are there possibilities that things like this happen? Is it possible one crazy scenario plays out that no one expected? Sure. And that's all that everybody wants to do is kick around those ideas. You um, Do you think Higgins like is more likely to get traded than to stay? Because I know, like, IU, we we agree, and most people think it's like a 10, 10%, 20% chance at most that he gets traded, that they work something out. But I think there's, I think, different? I think there's a very, very um, likely chance that Higgins gets traded uh, more than, like, yeah, than an IU or someone like that. Yeah, very much so. Because you have the Niners wanting absolutely wanting to keep Ayuk, the Bengals are kind of right. torn because they know they can't afford Higgins. So very much a different scenario. And, and as much as we want to say, okay, no one's going to trade for Higgins, we don't know that. Ridley got a $92 million, 50 guaranteed deal. So we don't know if Higgins will be overvalued by Denver, you know, for the, you know, 12 overall pick or something, or... You know, a team well, like the, the Steelers might go after Higgins. Like, that's that could happen. There, there was a writer for, like, a Patriots beat writer that was talking about the Ridley situation and just, you know, Higgins or how you give. If one of these guys are traded, he was saying they need receivers so bad right now. And that, you know, even if it's not the true top 10 alpha, you can, you, you might have to just pay them like a top 10 even though they're not a top 10 and a lot of people would run away from that saying no you can't do that but if you're trying to build your team back to be a destination and you're trying to support a rookie quarterback why not do that it's two years and two or three years and they're off the books anyways and if that means you can develop a quarterback or make your team a destination again because that i mean Let's be honest. The Patriots are not a destination. They were not. Foxborough, Massachusetts isn't a destination for these guys. It was because of Tom Brady mostly in the winning, you know? Yeah. So I don't get why more teams don't, like, overpay a little bit. Like, I, I don't blame the – I actually kind of give the Titans credit. I know it goes against the book and they overpaid, but they have Levis and they want to know – they believe there's something with Levis. They want to know what he has. So they keep Hopkins. They go and get a Ridley and you know, maybe draft a guy too down the line and find out rather than playing these games the Patriots are playing sign a bunch of number three guys. Yeah. Like, I hear you, bro. I, I, I guess I give teams credit for being aggressive, you know? Yeah. Taking a chance. Uh, what else? What else? You got anything uh, else? Anything on the, the Jalen Hurts um, front? Um, anything on, on ADP or anything else? And anybody else wants to call the, in, the, uh, dial in, and then we'll go over to Adam in a second. Adam's sitting there waiting patiently. Oh, go, go to Adam. Adam, what's up? Hey, just calling in. I saw you were questioning the cards trade in the 1-104. One, Do you questioning? think they'd be interested in Denver's 12th round pick? 12th round not pick. saying for the number four 12 overall but you know i know they are yeah 12th overall i know uh arizona has a 27th overall pick and like the what 35th overall pick you think that'd be enough to trade up with denver mm, i i don't know I, I hope the car. If you're trading out of the four pick and you can get one of these quarterbacks, it needs to be twelve in the future first rounder. Oh, I'm not even. Denver has no chance of getting 
the four unless they include Patrick Sertan. That's so what, what's the question. what's the question then? I'm sorry, I, I was I was uh, responding. Denver trading their um, first round pick, the twelfth, for Arizona's twenty seventh overall pick oh. and their two hundred three. Oh oh oh, I got gotcha. you. They can come up get a pretty I got gotcha. you corner. De- definitely, I love I love that. I don't know that you. I don't That'd know that. Be awesome for yeah, Arizona. I would love that. What what would be amazing? Do you have put any stock in Spencer Rattler? I don't. They would, they would, to take Rattler? Yeah. No, I don't think they'd take. First of all, you don't. The worst. Thing, the worst message you can send your quarterback Kyler is you're drafting a QB in the top twelve. Let alone I'm the saying first Denver round. take Rattler. Oh, Denver no, take Denver. Rattler. I got you, bro. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I got you all backwards. I don't know why I'm hearing different things. Oh, you're all good. You did say twelfth round pick, and so I don't know if I'm hearing. I don't know if you're saying it wrong or if I'm hearing it wrong or whatever. Rattler, sure. Like, I don't mind Rattler, I guess, later on. But Denver would be crazy to abandon Russell Wilson for Rattler. I like Rattler. He's a good upside guy, no doubt about it. I really kind of like him. I really do. I I liked Hen and Hooker a lot last year, even though, you know, he was coming back from an ACL tear. But I I like Rattler. But to abandon Russell Wilson for Rattler would be a laughing stock. Because he, he's just an upside guy. He's not Rattler's no guarantee whatsoever. He's got so much work. He's a project and a half. I like him, but he, he quarterback. At you, yeah, you have and to. And we're take a, we're a hundred percent convinced Russell Wilson wasn't the problem in Denver because he had one of the most times in pocket out of any of the QBs in in the league. And you know, bro, he, start, he started to he guys, started to cook. You know? He started to cook in your own your own coach. If you're Denver's <laughs> team, your own coach said. We're benching you if you don't remove your injury clause. It was, which was an illegal thing to do. He started to play average quarterback play. He started to play a little bit more than average. He was, he was, he was like people were saying he was back. I didn't agree he was back, but people were saying Russ is back. He was doing better than average. He was looking pretty solid. He had momentum, and you asked him to take away his injury clause. Like, is Russell the problem? I don't think so. Uh, Is he? Is he the same quarterback? Is he? Is he broken? Asking this dude. What? If you're paying this dude as much as we were, and you're he's still paying us him the rate of play. He's you're still us. paying him. You're paying him seventy million dollars right now. Yeah, yeah, and it hurts. That's why you know <laughs> yeah. Denver was a little salty. Yeah, uh-huh. you know, I'm not saying how they handled the situation was right in the slightest. They did Russell Wilson dirty. He didn't deserve that. He was playing better, but he got up to a level where you know it was very mediocre. Like and for what we were paying him, we were paying him for much more than just mediocre. So you're 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 Denver, you're Den- you're Denver fan. Rates. You're a Denver fan clearly because you're using words like we and I and I appreciate you. I don't want you to think I I don't I don't appreciate you. But let me ask you this: Is it more likely that a team that had Javante Williams fully healthy proved he was way ahead of schedule in the offseason get misused? And, and 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 Russell Wilson get misused and not supported right, or is it more likely that these two players failed Denver? What what, what feels more likely? Like I it, look at it as they were they we have a good backup in Jaleel McLaughlin. I know not a lot of people are fans of him, but he is a decent backup, and he is coming back from a ACL tear, so they may have you know. The fact that they didn't give him any more increased workload kind of upsets me as a fan. But, you know, if you want to protect your high-value asset, we started the year 1-5, so we have next to no chances of making the playoffs. Then we make a good run. But, like, you're not going to try to push for this dude to maybe get injured going into a possible good season. Hey, Terrell, Terrell, I don't know if that's you, but if you can mute, I don't know, somebody's talking in the, the background there. Just mute real quick if you could. Go ahead, Travis, real quick. We'll go over to Terrell next. Go ahead, Travis. I was just saying, and now he, he watched probably all the games. I didn't watch all of them, obviously. I'm not watching all the Broncos games, but the games I saw, it's like I, we went from training camp, and, you know, I know that smoke season two with John <laughs> Payton, you know, just – talking the world up about Javante, um, then making him part of a three-back committee. And, and then when a lot of times I'd see him running them, and he, he was running them like he was like this up-the-middle power back instead of throwing him the ball more and, you know, getting him out, out to the outside and letting him break tackles, which is what he's among the best in the league at. I, it just 
Seemed well, to re- me, re- I know he was coming off an injury. Yeah, but it seemed to be misused. Too. Real quickly, let me just say this: I don't know if if maybe Adams even misinterpreting what I'm saying. Do I think Russell Wilson's a great quarterback? No. I think he's broken. I don't know that he can ever be re- rebuilt and re you know retooled. I think Justin Fields takes the job. I think Russell Wilson's not even close to the same quarterback. But was he playing good enough that you're going to move on for Rattler? That was where this whole conversation spurred from. It wasn't me saying Denver should should have kept Russell Wilson. My whole thing is if you're going to spend $70 million plus million to get rid of Russell Wilson, you better bring in somebody better than Rattler or it's going to be a <laughs> laughing stock. That's what I'm saying, Joe or Adam. I think you're taking my whole take differently. I don't love Russell Wilson. He was a good move by the Steelers and, and standalone. We were excited about what it could be. But Fields is taking the job. And both of them are broken. Uh, Russell Wilson's broken, probably never to return to form. I don't know if anybody took my take wrong. That's I'm not saying Russell Wilson returns to form. Russ gets the job taken by Justin Fields, who's also broken, but is in a much better situation to be repaired. But all I'm telling you is Rattler's not the answer for that move. Um, is he good to scoop up and have an additional player? Sure. But as for the Cardinals, I'd love that move. I'd love to take advantage of the Denver Broncos in that situation and then be able to take uh, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. and then grab another another player here. Uh, uh, man, I, that would be unbelievable. Can you imagine if I got... And I know we wouldn't spend both picks on a receiver, but <laughs> imagine if you got Brian Thomas and Marvin <laughs> Harrison Jr. That would be unreal. That would be unreal. You got McBride. We'd have arguably the best passing attack. Maybe we could call Cliff Kingsbury back. Hey, Kingsbury, you want to come back to Arizona? We got Brian Thomas, Kyler, and Marvin Harrison Jr. Hey, don't sleep on Trey McBride either. I just said Trey McBride. Yeah. Oh, my bad. McBride's a top top three, top two, three tight end. He's absolutely phenomenal. He's probably number two. Speaking of that, do they they just ride it out with, uh, with Connor, or do you think they maybe draft a running back this year? Um, they may draft one because it's a the, the running backs will fall. But I, you know, I, my right. Your guess is as good as mine because I always think I know what's going to happen with Connor, and I don't. I'll be honest with you. He could have another great year. <laughs> he right. could have, he's weird. Well, he, he's a weird player to project. It's not. It's not. I feel an, like an, it's, an Arizona is one place. One of these guys could thrive though. Like I, yeah. I, if you guys get Harrison, I really like the direction your offense is going. Yeah. I mean, how, how could you not? Obviously, no. I, I love it. The only problem I think, is, I, I think Kyler's under, Kyler's underrated. I keep saying that. Yeah, a very, very, very concerned. Very, very concerned that the Cardinals punt this thing, and because it's right in front of them, just like New England. Like, no offense, Travis. I know you don't take yep. offense to it, I'm but right New there, England, I'm, New no, England, I'm right there with you. New England punted it. The, you had Marvin Harrison Jr. and you had Fields available for a ham sandwich, and the New England Patriots had it right in their Ooh. grasp, and they let it go. The Cardinals might do the same thing. I don't know. Uh, just got here quite late, but what's your take on Ayuk? I think Ayuk is far more unhappy than than Niner fans want to admit. Doesn't mean he'll get traded. I think there's a high likelihood he requests a trade if the if the Niner way continues and they don't want to extend him. Whether that leads to a trade or not is a whole different debate. It's just a, 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 an upset, you know, we need to get something done. I'm tired of seeing these deals happen around me. And if you think Ayuk's not upset, why is he tweeting Tomlin? Why is he poking the bear? Answer that question for, for me. Uh, let me go over to Terrell, who's been waiting patiently. Terrell, what's going on, my guy? You're live. Hey, what's up, Smitty? How you what's doing? Up, um, so I had, a, I had a couple questions. I've been doing Dynasty for about three years now. And I've been, I don't know, I've been plagued by injury the last year with a couple guys at quarterback and wide receiver. So I just wanted to see, uh, are you evaluating teams if I tell you my team and just see how you think I'm going to do this year? Uh, Hit me with it verbally. I don't know that I'm going to write the whole thing down right now, but hit hit it with me and I'll I'll go. Go. So it's a 2QB. I have A. Richardson and uh, Aaron Rodgers. And okay. then I have Saquon Barkley and Devon A. Chan. Barkley A. Chan. And then I have Barkley A. Chan and A. A. Richardson. Okay, go ahead. Barkley A. Chan Richardson. Go. And then I have Brandon Ayuk and Michael Pittman. Okay. And Christian and Christian Watson. Okay. And also James Cook and Jake Ferguson. All right. That's that's my starting lineup right there. Your tight end. Fucking dog. Sorry. Excuse my language. 
sorry, the dog. <laughs> okay. Anything else I can right, help you with? Yeah, that's my. No, that's my. Story. Who's that's your my tight end? Lineup. Damn tight end. Uh, Ferguson. Jake Ferguson. Yeah. What? Jake Ferguson. Ferguson. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know what you can do. Who's your other quarterback, Aaron Rodgers? I don't know what you can do. There's not much maneuverability there. Bar I mean, Bar you could trade Barkley, but then for what? You could trade Achan, but no one's going to give you the value. Um, do I love your wide receivers? No. Ayuk and Pittman are good. I love them? No. Do I like them? Yeah. AR5 I like. There's it, For me, it's future draft capital. Can you move, move future draft capital and get something else somehow? Like, what's your, well, what's your draft? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I just got a trade that just came in. From, from Someone's trying to give me Tyler Lockett, Trevor Lawrence, 2024 first. 2024 third, 2025 second for Saquon and Christian Watson, Aaron Richardson, in the 2025 first. So that's and, a lot. Yeah, no. They're, they're basically, hey, can I package in a bunch of garbage, throw a couple good pieces in, and try and get your team? No, thank you. <clears throat> you, you, you like, bro, what you need to do, what's your first round pick this year? What do you have? Nothing? It's, it's like number, hold on, let me check right now. I traded a couple draft picks, so yeah. how do I do that? It's a like lineup draft board. I don't know what you're looking at. Uh, go to trade. Make a, tr make a trade proposal to somebody. You'll see your draft picks. Okay, I got you. I don't even know what app I'm on using. sleeper right now, actually. I don't even know what app you're using, but I'm making, it's I'm, cra I'm saving lives here. Okay, hurry up. Let's go, Terrell. We got you. All right, I'll have to call back for that. Okay, one. we'll we'll see you later, pal. Appreciate you. Later, bro. Hey, I appreciate you, man. Get Take those care. dogs in line, bro. Later. Okay, uh, someone Sorry, call animal. Call. Someone call animal control right now. Well, uh, if uh, I don't know if he follows the Dynasty show. If he doesn't follow and call him, yeah, yeah. Hey, call into the Dynasty channel. We could definitely have this conversation. All right, Adam. Any final thoughts? I gotta go, boy. I'll be coming back here later tonight. Adam, any thoughts? Go. I just wanted to give my two cents on the Broncos. All right, bro. We'll see you later. Uh, uh, hopefully, you get, you're a parrot. You get a good QB in there. I'll be honest, bro. I, I, I'm not pleased with what your your organization tried to pull with Russell. Even though Russell was not a great quarterback last year. Again, I don't misinterpret what I'm saying. He was starting to cook a little bit better. And you guys pulled the rug out from under him in the middle of the year. You tried to that's as that's as bad as like shaving points or something in my mind. You're like, we're gonna we're gonna bench yeah, you even though you definitely should have let him finish even, the season out. Even I know you're playing we're gonna bench. Like, we're he's gonna earned bench. that at least. Like we paid him as much as we did. What yeah, you, he, that was a that was a horrible contract. We paid he's you. obviously not gonna be our quarterback next year. Who why do we care if he gets hurt? Like Well, cause you no, because you would have owed him a bunch of money. That's why they wanted I mean, they, Yeah, but we're still gonna owe him a bunch of money anyway. Now you're so, giving him seventy mil. <laughs> now you're paying. <laughs> now you're paying his salary, in so the Steelers can play him. It's crazy. Bro. Look, Elway was a part of that. Now he's gone. All right. It's Denver's got. A, I, I hate to break it to you, but Denver's got a lot of work ahead of them, bro. This ain't gonna be a one-year fix, man. This is gonna be a three, four, or five-year <laughs> turnaround. I'm sorry. All right, later, bro. Appreciate you. Have a good night. And I, and I, I don't feel bad for him because the Cardinals have been that way for their entire you know entirety of their existence <laughs> and we got to we got to a super bowl but that's it we didn't we have one uh, aurora you're live real quickly i gotta go what can i do for you real briefly yeah no worries smitty i'll make it quick i just tuned in so i'm gonna re-watch this but i'm sure it's been said i just saw it from the title but for the people saying that jason kelsey is you know, a huge factor here. I mean, he was obviously the guy that led in the tush push, sure. But people are, are like, I'm looking at the social media reactions that it doesn't matter. Kelsey's not here anymore. And I'm like, bro, Jalen can squat 600 pounds and they still have the best O-line in football. So I don't think the tush push is going to be affected at all. Maybe it's a little lower percentage. But it's still like in the 90 percentage uh, mark, in my opinion. So, yeah, I just I find it weird that a lot of people are just like 
starts knocking it off all of a sudden, where it's like, oh, okay, the center retired, and now all of a sudden this play is, like, obsolete. Like, this play is still going to happen, and it's still going to be one of the most yeah. unstoppable plays like, in like the Like I said, e- even if they ruled that the tush-push was illegal, you don't think that Sirianni's going to say, um, hey, what is in the confines of this? Well, oh, you can do this, this, yeah. and this. You just can't do this. Okay, let's do that. And and maybe it's not as effective, but like I said earlier, like you just alluded yeah. to, it's because he squats 600 pounds. Kelsey was a big part, but if anybody thinks he's not sneaking over and scoring a touchdown anyway, right. maybe, maybe 10, 20% less times doing it that way. Okay, that, that's fine. But if anybody that's thinks that just because the tush push isn't equaling a touchdown that he won't bootleg or throw a touchdown pass like it's gonna some of it's gonna be to Barkley but it's people are out of their mind yeah no that's all pretty, I, I just, yeah I mean that's all for me I just think yeah it's crazy people and you got a quarterback that squats 600 it's like Josh Allen like if you get near goal line territory or fourth and one you're just quarterback sneaking it it doesn't matter how you do it so yeah all right I'll let you go bro all right, bro. Appreciate you. Uh, go ahead, yep. Travis. Anything else? Yeah, just on the Broncos. Um, maybe they took up some weird trade, but I, I feel like they're – I keep thinking it's going to be Knicks. I don't know why. I just have a weird feeling. But now I'm starting to worry it could be Penix. Cause I don't want Penix to go there. But just because it seems like – you know, there's not as like the Seahawks probably aren't going to go after him now, and you know the Raiders might not go after him. Now. You don't want it. You don't want Penix so, Jr. to go where? Broncos. Yeah, no, I don't want anybody to go to the Broncos. I don't know. If, I don't know if what's his ne- name still listening. Do I. I, the Bron- I keep the, thinking it's going to be next, but yeah, and that's the that's the unfortunate part is whatever quarterback goes, they're screwed. You know, to a degree, maybe not long term, but. The problem is your development's very important, and if you have, yeah. But maybe, right. maybe, maybe. Unless Peyton pulls a rabbit out of his hat. Yeah, I mean, let, let's just say Nix goes there and he's effective year one. I'll be excited for him. I'm definitely not going to write him off, but sure. I'm certainly going to have no, some no, cautionary, no. you know, pieces in, of content in place saying, "Look, I love Nix, but this isn't great." Um, but I mean, there is it there could is be worse. That chance that Sean, Sean Payton. You know, I don't think Sean Payton wanted Wilson anyway when he got there, but that Sean Payton's been waiting for his guy and he still has something left. So it's just the way Sean Payton has shown himself these past couple of years, it hasn't been promising yet. So, yeah. All right, Travis, I'll be back for uh, another show or the Dynasty show, okay? Yep. Talk to you later. Appreciate you later. All right, uh, guys, don't forget the. Fantasy football show is we got a dynasty show, youtube.com slash dynasty fantasy football. And we also have uh, the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the fantasy football show. I will see you all later tonight for the dynasty show. Okay. For the dynasty show or for another, probably both. Like at some degree, we'll have a dynasty show. Some, some, at some point we'll have, we'll have something going on. Okay. Appreciate you all. I'll see you all later. Um, rewatch the show if you missed anything. And, uh, you know, let's end it on a let's end it on a note. What could we what could we hit? What button could we hit? Legend has it if you say Saint Brown three times in the dark in the bathroom, you will immediately lose your league. Got him. Super chat here. I'm sorry, uh, e-, e Rock. E Rock says, any hope for Bryce Young? E Rock, you still here, bro? I'm so sorry about that. E Rock, where are you at? Make sure you let me know if you're here so I, I know I'm taking care of you. Uh, thank you to Deckard for dropping the $50 holler. If anybody wants their $50 bold prediction up on the board, all you got to drop is a $50 holler. And um, you can get in the contest of co-hosting a show for at least one or two segments. 
and you'll start the beginning of the show on screen with your boy and we'll be together kicking off uh, the first segment. So um, anybody, any hope for Bryce Young? Probably not this year. You know, from a fantasy perspective, certainly not. But from a long-term perspective, could he come around? Could they? Maybe, but I don't like what they're doing. I don't think they're giving... I've seen people go, not a bad wide receiver room. They've got a good team on this on this Carolina Panthers roster. I don't agree at all. I think it's garbage. So I'm sorry, bro. I, I'm especially sorry if that's your team, E-Rock. I, I love you, pal. Is E-Rock here? I don't know if E-Rock... E-Rock, appreciate your super chat. I hope you're still here and you heard that. See you all later. Got him. Live Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern, every single Monday through Friday. Live whenever big news breaks. Your boy Smitty is tied for... Well, I was in first in my bracket. Um, now I'm in third, but I'm I'm, I'm eight points uh, or, or ten correct. I ten correct. Everybody has ten correct uh, so far. In my bracket, my bracket's looking good. My bracket. Let's see. Do I have any Final Four teams? Oh no, who got knocked out here? Uh, B. Oh, this team had BYU going far. <laughs> Damn it. Um, that's right. That's right. It was my crazy bracket. Wow, a lot of a lot of upsets. Um, happening. I love it. I love it. I love it. 